Congenital heart defects are the number one killer in infants with birth defects, which could possibly be remedied with a more effective heart screening of newborns before leaving the hospital. One Oklahoma couple's personal tragedy has led to legislation that could save precious lives and taxpayer dollars. In their own words, Austin and Melissa Moore share their story. Grayson was born on uh, March 1st of 2011. We brought him home on uh, March 3rd. You know, just to have the whole family together under one roof was, uh, was great. This is my buddy, Bo. <laughs> and I like to hold him all night. We took him back to the hospital for a weight check because it was the weekend. You know, it's one of those things, he, he, something felt wrong, but we, uh, He'd he felt cold. Himself. He'd felt cold for yeah. about a day. By the time we got to the hospital, it, his temperature was 91.7. So they rushed us down to the ER. It was over five hours in our local ER before he was um, flown to Oklahoma City. I was holding his little hand, and I, I told him, just hold on until we get there. Uh, and he squeezed my finger. And I thought right then that he was going to he was going to fight as hard as he could. He did. He's a fighter. It's called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Uh, essentially, the left half of his heart, uh, there was muscle there, but it hadn't formed into a chamber. All right, and so that's what pumps blood out to your body he didn't have that part. And so uh, what that means is on that day when he very nearly died, um, by some accounts, some of his organs did, and so they had to be brought back. Uh, we spent a month in the hospital just trying to get his, his lungs, his kidney, his liver, uh, to get all those back in good enough shape that then we could go forward and treat the heart condition. And also during the first few days there before he was diagnosed, yeah. there was so much more damage done to what half the half of the heart he did have. Yeah, it was having uh, to work so hard that it was, I mean, it was scarred that up. That caused pro problems later on. Yeah. The pulse ox screening uh, will detect, in most cases, the seven critical congenital heart defects, um, of which HLHS is one of the most severe. Um, it doesn't catch all of them, but the rate's right around the upper 80s to the 90 percent of, of how many cases it will find. You know, from our standpoint, if Grayson had had this test, uh, there's no helicopter ride, there's no near-death experience. It's, we discover it in the hospital, we take it, transport him to the specialist in Oklahoma City, probably by an ambulance, or we can go with him. And before he's ever in a, a, a bad, bad way, he's on the medicine that keeps the rest of his organs, the rest of his body strong and healthy but he also would have had his first surgery that week instead of waiting three and a half weeks to have it. You know, there's, there's plan A, there's plan B, there's plan C, and what happened with us was plan A went out the window because of what happened that, that fifth day. Uh, one open heart, and um, I, I've Who lost count of how many cath procedures. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the last procedure, um, his heart just gave out, and it, it stopped for a while. Um, and in the end, he was out too long, and um, it's called hypoxic brain injury. And um, he, you know, he came back to the room, but he didn't come back. high school with, um, very kindly sent him with some balloons. That little boy loved those balloons. Uh, he, he grabbed hold of the string and play with them and pop them. And at the funeral, we had some friends um, give us some balloons, uh, a, a lot of them, and uh, we released them. So it, it was very nice. I hope, you know, the next kid who has uh, a similar problem, it, it's found early enough to give them better options. 
there are three of us heart moms working with the State Department of Health, so we'll get it right. Absolutely.